thing. I'm about to put the word out. I don't care how silly I look right now, y'all. I am feeling so good. Despite a very loud and rude ass hat that keeps running up and down the block today with a very loud automotive, it has been a good day. Sorry for the loud typing. I normally try to get this out of the way beforehand, but it's been one of those days, y'all. It's been one of those days. <laughs> I'm just grabbing some screen stuff really quick so you might hear a little bit of extra noise hopefully it won't be too bad I'm just getting the word out so that people know that we are live right now axiom is currently streaming as well so if you're dual box and watch both of our chats Hi, I am also modding in that as well. I uh, just wanted to thank everybody who has been showing me birthday love, dropping messages, those who have dropped donations. Those will go to not only... <laughs> Thanks for the subscription, honey. Uh, those will only, That will go to not only helping out with bills, but as I announced the other day, Axiom has moved in. We are officially a one uh, house couple right now. And even though we're going to be looking for a more permanent place to stay, it is nice having him here. I am so happy. I've been on cloud nine the last few days. And I am wearing my little princess tiara. I do hopefully have uh, a really pretty crystal tiara that a friend of mine sent me to the site. And I was on it for hours. But there's a $30 crystal tiara that I adore. So that is in the works of getting. And I will do another tiara chronicles when that happens. And <laughs> everything. Thank you. Hi, honey. everybody. Hi, honey. <laughs> I told him to wait a oh second. I was going to run back here because I can do that now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we are going to start our Gen X Cynics Twitch cast soon. So I'm excited about that. We'll be talking about movies and TV shows like the Loki series. And tonight for my birthday, once we wind down and relax, we're, we're thinking about renting the um, Hitman Bodyguard's wife because we love the Hitman's Bodyguard so much the first time we watched that movie together. So it's going to be a fun date night. We were out. We went for a drive. We didn't interact with too many people because there's still a lot of the bad stuff going around. But it was really fun to get out of the house. I've become a shut-in. And if you see the way this Bond Chronicles is and you're feeling nostalgic, you'll recall last year when I started this, this is how I started. I was on a very old computer. I didn't have a stable chair. I didn't have my studio set up. So I wanted to bring it back because this is where I started. I was sitting on my bed on a laptop. Thank you, Robin. How you doing tonight? But I was sitting on my bed wondering why I was even doing a live Twitch channel. I had just left the podcast that I thought I was going to be a part of, but mentally I just couldn't handle the stress of being on that show. And I adored the women that I was working with, but I needed something I could do where if I took breaks, it didn't hurt other people. If I get like manic, it doesn't affect other people. So I was like, I want to talk about social issues. I want to talk about politics and I want to get back into a good place. And within the last year, I started making changes. I started uh, exercise and dieting and I set up my house where I could, you know, do the Bonnet Chronicles from my desk, from the like more studio setting, but I wanted to bring it back old school. A, because we were out all day and I am kind of tired. I even baked a roll cake, which kind of fell apart in places, but icing saved the day for that. And it was just one of those things where it was like, 
Thank you, Aim Rocks. <laughs> One of those things where it was like, I just want to bring it old school for one last time. Each Bonnet Chronicles from now on will be in a more, um, what a setting where I'm at my desk instead of the bed. Because back then, I really had to do it. I was a lot heavy. I'm a thick girl, but I was thick with like four C's back then. And with a lot of motivation to get a bit better, I started riding my bike and... You know, I can feel it. I don't see it. And I'm probably not going to see it because I do deal with a lot of body dysmorphia. But I have been working hard at exercising five days a week, 30 minutes. I had to build up to that because when I started this, I was really bad. I am only five foot three. And when I say I was well over 400 pounds at the time, I was, it's not exaggeration between the depression the dealing with the stuff with my mom and then just transitioning from getting her out of the house and having a pandemic drop on us. I did not leave the house at all. And I'm still having issues leaving the house and I needed to be active. So, Oh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, Robin. And it took a lot to get to this place where not only was I, I am I exercising every day. I'm eating a bit better. I'm I'm not going to act like I'm this health guru, y'all. I found what works for me, and I know that the transition to uh, Slimmer Me is going to be very long. I'm not trying to do rapid weight loss. I'm trying to do sustainable. And I need to say this because a lot of people think when somebody who has been very open about being a heavy set woman starts to do stuff for their health, that we're not being body positive. I understand that some of you can carry a larger frame and it not hurt you. I am getting up there in age. I am 44 today. I need to do stuff so that I can be around here for my 64th Bonnet Chronicle and my 84th Bonnet Chronicle if we're not doing streaming and some other technology by then. I need people to understand that getting healthy is no way me saying being a, a thick sister is bad. I just need to slim it down a bit more so that I can not have to be in a bed doing these bonnet chronicles, you know, unless I'm going back nostalgia like I'm doing tonight. I think people get really upset when they see somebody doing stuff to slim down because it feels like a personal attack. It's not an attack on you at all for me to try to get myself to a healthier place. And that's physically and mentally. I've been working hard on both of those things because you don't live forever. And I've had a lot of stuff happen to me over the years. And welcome to the chat. Hey, I love you. 666. Welcome to the chat. Thank you. I think a lot of people think that, you know, changing yourself means you're doing it wrong. And no, I mean, one of the reasons why I decided to start talking about mental health more, and I have decided to make that a permanent YouTube thing. I'm going to tape another video either um, Saturday or maybe even tomorrow, depending on how I feel. I need people to understand why I'm being so passionate about mental health. I see a lot of trends. I've been the shut in like everybody else during this pandemic. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of people think mental health is like a get out of bad thing free card. And that bothers me. It bothers me because I know the things I've done when I'm manic. I know the things I can do when I'm manic. I'm still responsible for those things. And a lot of people have been doing some really crappy things, predator-like things, and then go, oh, no, I need to take a break from my mental health. As somebody who legit takes breaks from social media, from anything that is a stressor, it bothers me that somebody who might have been caught doing something they're not supposed to, especially illegal things with minors, all of a sudden taking a mental health break. And it's like, that's not mental health. You're just trying to duck the heat. And then there's just so much going on with this crazy ass YouTube drama of this art person who legit, she had a successful channel. 
She had everything going on for her, but she was so obsessed with this other art channel because they dated the same guy. And she just went on this like 10 year stalking thing. And I'm a writer, y'all. I've got a book coming out. I know a lot of y'all have been hearing me say that for a while because I finished it in 2019 right before the world went to crap. And my editor, unfortunately, has been having some serious health problems. And I stick with people who know me. And one of the things I love about the person who's editing this book is she asks questions. She understands where I'm going with the story. And she's not trying to change too much. And I think she understands that I just need to get it formatted to where people can read it properly without trying to distort the messages that I have in the book. So I'm excited about getting my sci-fi novel out there. And I just hope that you all like it. And even if you don't, just let me know because I know that with my illness, there are a lot of people with these kind of illnesses that have delusions of grandeur. They think they could do amazing things. They think they're the best writers in the world. And you end up listening to some of their stuff or, or reading some of their stuff is like cringe. And I try to work hard on building characters and building the world that people feel that yeah, it's fake, but it's realistically plausible. So I'm hopeful that comes across. But even if it doesn't, even if only two people buy it, I wrote a novel. I am proud of that. Because years ago, I was not in the headspace to where I could have done that. And for real, it just bugs me how many people use mental health as an excuse they throw around the word sociopath without knowing what a sociopath is. And as a diagnosed sociopath, I learned not to be ashamed of that diagnosis. But, you know, there was a lot that I had to learn over the years to accept about myself, accept about my diagnosis so that I can continue to survive this. Because some people like to act like there's a cure for mental illness. Like you can just cure it and be free of it. You can pray it away. It is an ongoing struggle. It requires me getting proper rest, having a proper, healthy, balanced life, and everything helps. Taking medication when I can't get my brain to rest because it's like a bunch of voices vying for my attention. I need people to understand that when they say, I want to be a sociopath, I think it's cool. Stop looking at the Hollywood versions of this. It pisses me off seeing people talk about wanting to be like Dexter. Linking what I have to just a bunch of serial killers. And a lot of people who do have schizophrenia and bipolar disorder do fly off the deep end. But there's a lot of factors. And like everything, health is on the spectrum. And depending on how you were raised, what your environment is, or just who you are as a person, you're going to be different in how you handle mental health issues. One of the things I told Axiom about when I was younger in junior high school, I had one of the worst fights in my entire life. Two of the most nastiest fights I had was that young. But one of them, this girl was picking on a friend of ours and I just wanted her to stop. I am a very strong defender of people that I love. And having friends who were in special ed, I was extra protective of them. I wasn't in special ed, but I had friends who were. Because just because a person has special needs doesn't mean they don't deserve to have friends. And this girl was bullying my friend. And it just, oh, you're welcome. I, I, I feel like because I've lived it, it's easier now for me to talk about it. Now that I've realized that I don't have to be ashamed of my mental health. But years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do this. But the whole thing about being manic is I have to be careful with it. And that fight taught me that because I went up to the girl. I said to her, hey, you can't do that to my friend. You need to stop tormenting her. You need to stop bothering her. And her response was to spit on me. And I mean, just hawk and spit on me. And I snapped. Now, I was always a thick sister. I was never, there was only one point in my life that I was ever truly 
since then, and I talked about it in another mental health uh, chat where my auntie carries a picture of it because she thought it was the happiest moment of my life, and I was miserable that whole entire time. They put me on this weird slim fast diet, and I had all the rapid weight loss that they wanted me to have, but I was miserable. But um, the girl spit on me, and I snapped. And I chased her. And I don't know how schools are where you are, but in New York, we had these big buildings that were like almost a full city block wide for that junior high school. And I chased her through two sections of the building into the bathroom, and I was ready to destroy her. I hit her so much that she had to get surgery. I should have gotten into a lot more trouble than I did. It was a combination of my family stepping in and me being a good student, even though I had another fight before that a year prior, because another student was just being harassing, and I finally snapped. And that's the thing about me. I do not seek out fights. I was what was known as the finisher. And I hate even bragging about that because it makes it seem like I was glorifying that aspect of my life. I really wasn't. But if I get to that point where I feel like I have to fight, whether it's to protect myself or whether I'm feeling full-on aggression, it is dangerous. And I knew it was dangerous because I did not want to stop hitting her. The guidance counselor pulled me off this woman not woman, she was a child back then, I was a child back then, pulled me off this girl twice. And the only thing that saved her was not only was I getting tired, but my hands started hurting. It saved her life that I got fatigued. And that scared me. And I've been that angry only once more in my life. And I've tried to avoid that anger because it's not worth it. But it doesn't help that I can reach those levels, that I could just throw it all away. And when I think about that drama on YouTube, it's like you want to be more side-eye of it because that's a level of crazy that I, as a diagnosed mental health sufferer, I never thought I could ever be jealous of anybody that level. I can't imagine being that hateful to somebody just because they dated somebody I was dating. I told Axiom, he's dated a few people, I've dated a few people. I don't know his girlfriends, I don't need to know his girlfriends. He's with me now. That's all that matters. To have that level of fixation, though, that's the part I understand. Because I get fixated on a lot of things, and when I do, it's hard to like let that go. But she twisted it. And the bad thing is, the girl has talent. She can draw her butt off. She, I wasn't really that cool with her commentary because it felt like she was preaching on things without a lot of information. So I never really followed her. But the fact is, she had a successful channel. She apparently got the guy that they were both supposedly dating. She had everything going for her, but she couldn't let go of that hate. And I felt like she gives off a lot of the vibes my mom did. That whole MPD, it's got to be about me. I've got to be the head bitch in charge energy. And I just feel like a lot of people don't understand the mental aspects of that. Even if she had wanted to let go of her hatred of this other content creator, she couldn't. This girl became her rival. This girl became her enemy, and she just had to destroy her. And like I said, the only time I ever felt that much rage and hate, I actually got into a fight with that person because they spit on me, and the only thing that saved their lives was me getting fatigued. And like I said, I really think if had I got into some serious trouble for that, I might have gotten help sooner. Because I went through what a lot of people with mental health issues went through, the denial phase. Because A, in our community, it's still a lot shameful to have issues like this than anything else, which make that make sense. It is a health. It's not a character choice or flaw. It's just how my mind processes things. But in our family especially, 
they don't like it that I'm so open and talking about these issues. They think it brings stigmas and shame upon our house. And you know what? They just have to deal. I don't talk to half of them, most of them anyway. This is who I am. And I would rather be real about who I am and what I go through so that other people who are going through it know they're not alone so that you see that this is a human face to it. And I don't make excuses. Thank you for the happy birthday. Welcome to the chat. I just want people to know that I own up. I know that I did people wrong when I was manic. It's not an excuse. I still hurt them. All I can do is get better and prove to the people who give me a chance now that I am a better person. <laughs> Thank you. It says princess too. I love it. I'm looking to get a, a crystal one. Thanks to um, my friend who also does a podcast. And I need to start pumping up my friend's podcast. Um, she's done stuff with Bianca. If you don't know Bianca, you are in a part of the K-Hive. Um, she is an Arizona attorney, and we have been following each other for a while. And I, I need to get her proper um, stuff linked to this because I listen to her chat. She talks a lot about politics and stuff as well. And she hit me up to a site with actual tiaras. So I will be doing another Tiara Chronicles somewhere down the line because they're beautiful and they're affordable. They're not those really expensive pieces of junk either. But um, I just want people to understand that the reason I talk about mental health is because it helps me realize that my illness is nothing to be ashamed of. And thank you. I, I, I looked at a really beautiful one that I seen on the, um, that website that my friend linked. And I am looking forward to, to getting an actual tiara along with a mood gown. I told people on Twitter, and I know a few of my friends was like, that sounds like a good idea. I don't like dresses normally. This is about as fancy as I go. I got my little purple frills uh, number going. I don't wear dresses all the time. I'm more comfortable in t-shirts and jeans and stuff because I'm always doing some kind of fixing and other work. So I'm not really the whole frou-frou girly girl, but I do like sitting in gowns. And I would wear a gown for when I'm in the mood and I just need to pick myself up. And Axiom's already prepping for it because as much as I'm not, I, I told people, we're not going to do a wedding. For me, weddings always felt like um, a waste of money, to be honest. I feel like instead of spending so much on one day, we can invest it in a house that my mom doesn't have any kind of access to in a future for a kiddo. Hey, Carly, thank you so much. Thank you, sis. I just would rather not waste money right now because the plan, even before the book drop, is to start putting away for a house because when I moved to Michigan... I made the mistake of bringing my mom with me. I had the opening. She gave me the opening with all her complaints to send her back to Georgia then. But I was like, no, I'm the oldest. She is my responsibility. I took her up here with me. And one of the things I did so that she felt like she was part of the home too was I put her name on the paperwork. Even though I have plenty of proof that she didn't put not a damn penny into this place, her name is on some of the paperwork, and while she doesn't have direct access to it, she's petty. I know she would try to fight me on this. Plus, having her know where I live right now makes me leery, because last year, at this time, she threatened to have cops come to here, just because. So my thing is, instead of worrying about a wedding, Instead of worrying about an expensive dress that I only get to wear for one day, I can get a cosplay made mood gown that costs far less and get far more use. I already have the love of my life. He's already told me that the ring that I want is doable. So I'm going to get a nice ring. I'm going to get the paperwork done. We're going to get married the quiet way. And it's going to be nice. And I get that a lot of people will be disappointed. I have friends who are looking forward to being bridesmaids. And I love y'all and I'm sorry, but I was never in the wedding. And all the wedding talk that I did 
three or four years ago, that was my mom. She was so set on me doing this. She had this wedding book by that David Tutera guy. She kept watching four weddings and all of that stuff she had me sit through with her made me not want to get married like that. When I seen the price tag for weddings and receptions, I was like, I could buy a house with that. I could send my kid to college for a couple of semesters with some of the stuff they drop. There is absolutely no reason in this world for me to spend that much money on one day like that to show off to people who love us anyway. I don't surround myself with fake people anymore. Whether it's people I follow or people I know in real life, I don't have energy for that. So none of my friends are really expecting me to show off anyway. And while they might be disappointed that I didn't get them some big ass ugly bridesmaid gowns, I think they're more disappointed that we can't gather. And with what's been going on this last year or so, I wasn't going to be able to plan anything big anyway, because not everybody's vaccinated yet still. And it's not worth the health risk for me at all either. So when we do do it, there will be hopefully in the future a gathering so friends and us can get together and geek it out. But as far as I'm concerned, doing this quietly and just being with the person I love is going to be enough. And I'm just grateful that I'm surrounded by people who were okay with this and supportive of it. You know, because I know that the person who wanted the wedding the most didn't matter anyway. She's no longer in my life and the way she's acting, she's not going to be a part of my life. She had 40 plus years of my life and she decided that she had to do her. So she's going to live her life. I'm going to live my life. I leveled up. I am 44 today and I am feeling good. I, I think life has taught me anything. It's you don't have to stay broken. You're always going to show the scars from the breaks. And I don't think any of my scars are ugly, even though I know people notice things, especially when I do like the live vlogs when I'm fired up about something. I know that the jokes about my teeth go, I don't care. I have built up, and I thank my bullies for this, a mental armor against anybody who wants to attack my physical appearance, whether it's my weight. Whether it's my teeth, I don't care. I have my own personal fears from trauma at a dentist that stop me from going in. I'm working on that. But until that happens, y'all can say your comments. It'll just get you blocked. I realize that I like me. No, matter of fact, I love me. And that's all that matters. And that radiates. And I think that's why people understand that what they see is what they get. I am not going to be fake about who I am. I don't need to. It's more exhausting to put up a front to me than anything else. And I've gotten more overwhelming love and support from people just being who I am, whether I'm manic or surly or happy. And it's nice to be able to be happy on Twitter again without having a bunch of BS to deal with. I don't think people understand how, um, good that feels and ex, ex, that is nice justice of the peace does work and I, I think people don't understand that keeping it simple for me is so much better for my nerves I'm less prone to worrying about how things are going to go when I don't have to worry about big things. And I've never been a party person. And I know a lot of people are like, well, you're an introvert. And that's a part of it. Part of my sociopathy is extreme introversion. I can socialize, obviously. I, I like hanging out with friends, going to the movies and stuff every once in a while. But then I need my recharge time and I need to be left alone, especially when I get creative and I want to write and do things with art and stuff, I don't want to have to be like, oh, you want to go out? So I'm glad I'm at the age where a lot of my friends are homebodies too. So we plan way ahead for things now. Like, if we're going to go to Comic-Con, we know months ahead of time we have a strategy plan to get in once it gets too people as I like to call it, and get out. 
And speaking of Comic-Con, one of my birthday presents, Axiom got me a D20 necklace because he knows I play D&D. He knows that's part of who I am. He also got me Zelda Link's Awakening, which I'll probably be playing on stream at some point as well. And then one of my favorite Dragon Ball Supers characters, Kale. Why? Because I kind of act like Kale. I'm very quiet in person. And people don't feel that way because they're so used to me ranting on these Bonnet Chronicles and on my little vlogs that I put on Twitter. But in reality, if I don't know you, I just listen because a lot of people like to talk at me. And when I get emotional and upset, I kind of fire up like Kale does. And if you haven't watched the Dragon Ball Supers, um, it's a fun thing, but that tournament went on way too long. That's some of the stuff we'll be talking about on Gen Exitic. Some of the stuff we love about anime and some of the stuff we wish they would get on with. But I, I like that, you know, he was here. But the biggest birthday gift he gave me was saying he's going to be here from now on because I kind of needed that. I like to play the part of being strong. And for years, I had to do it on my own. And I'm okay with that. I needed to learn that I could do it on my own because I had a very abusive person that used to tell me I couldn't. I would never be able to do things without him. And I'm sure those of you who have gone through that have heard somebody tell you that. And I used to be afraid. I did not think I would ever be able to live on my own, to take care of my son by myself. And I showed everybody who doubted me that I could. But it feels good to have somebody here now. I feel like I'm ready to have this relationship and to enjoy life with a partner that is here physically and not just coming every once in a while between houses you know it worked for us because we wanted to take it slow but it really was getting to the point where it's like kind of miss you and i'm tired of missing you i want you here and he was feeling the same way and it just all worked out and i'm grateful y'all i have been so happy these last the last few years have been better but it feels like things just keep getting better. And I am so appreciative to everybody who has been with me on this journey, who helped me through all the tough times going with the stuff with my mom, who continue to support me as I do these Bonnet Chronicles, as I attempt to do other streams, who I know want that book to be out soon. And it's coming, y'all. I'm telling you, I am so excited for y'all to read this story. And they are setting off fireworks. And I did not set this up. I don't know why. It's not the 4th of July yet. And even though it's my birthday, I'm not big on fireworks. But even that's not bothering me. I've been on cloud nine since yesterday. And I've been staying on cloud nine. I baked the roll cake. Uh, it's the second one I made, and I think I know what I'm doing wrong that causes the little separations. So I'm going to keep working on it, but it was delicious. I am so excited to have a piece later on because the technique that my friend, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on her name? She has been a friend of mine for a bit. She just moved to Michigan too with her family. She's like a sister to me. Um, one of the things she taught me was a couple of techniques to make it better. And she was like, girl, if you want to use store frosting, use store frosting. Because I was like, well, what about making a homemade frosting? That's a lot of work. I'm not doing that. I'm a baker to a certain extent. I'm a home cook more than anything. I know some people who can make like frostings and creams from scratch. That's not me, champ. Baking a cake from scratch is tough enough. Getting it to not fall apart is tough enough. So I don't care if I make a regular cake and then put some uh, frosting from a can on it. That, the only way to get decent lemon frosting for me was from a can. I wasn't trying to figure out how to do it myself. So I'm proud of what I got accomplished. And as I keep practicing, I know it'll get better. And that's how life is. You have to start somewhere we don't know everything you know oh oh thank you so much for joining the chat and thank you for the birthday wishes 
And I will be doing this full time for the full hour on Friday. This was just, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for the constant support on here, on YouTube, and especially on Twitter. When I started on Twitter, it was a fight. And I told Axiom this story in the car because I didn't want social media. I was working for a gaming company, right, and reviews and doing promotions for, like, Wizards of the Coast, Turbine Games at the time, which was a subsidiary of Hasbro Games. I was in gaming. I only wanted to talk about gaming and write about gaming and stick to the site. And my then-editor, Alice Wilkes, was like, you need a social media presence. I was like, I got Facebook. What else do I need? She was like, no, the young people are not on Facebook, which wasn't a lie, per se, but I figured, why do I need more to Facebook? She was like, you need to get Twitter. She got me to sign up for Twitter, Reddit, and some other thing, and I was adamant that I did not want to be on Twitter. It sounded stupid to me, you know, and I just did not want to be a part of it, but she was assistant, and I did, and... I remember when I hit my first 100 followers, I thought I was doing something. Honestly, I never thought I would get past 100 because all I did was promote games and talk about gaming reviews. But then 2016 happened and I changed. And it wasn't always for the better. But I was not wanting that orange sack of pus to be our president. And the fight in me grew. And I formed groups. And we tried our best, but the election was stolen from us. But it lit a fire in me, and it taught me to just be myself. Be honest with people. Don't put up a fake front. Don't use your followers as an attack mob. I had to learn a lot of stuff. And I also learned that I am... I might have been fragile once. I might have been that person that needed shelter and protection. But I'm not that person anymore. I am my own fighter. And I am so grateful to the 20 plus thousand I use who for some odd reason like my rants enough to follow me. Thank you. I did not think that I would ever have that many people interested in what I had to say at any time or for any reason. I just speak my mind. And the fact that so many of you think and appreciate the things I have to say, the stuff I put out there about home, that every once in a while random sketches that I do, it really is heartfelt to me, y'all. I, I don't know if you know how much of a boost you give me some days when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling low and manic. So I really, I know this is a birthday stream, but it really is a thank you because it really helps so much to have the support. And I just want you to know that I'm going to keep on doing this. I'm going to keep on talking about things. And if you're down, great. I want to be there for y'all. And my DMs for friends especially are always open. I might not be able to respond as fast as I like to because sometimes I have the creepers that come in like, hey, you. And can I tell you something? Even if I was single, that's not going to work. I don't understand men who think sliding in the DMs with the, hey, how you doing nonsense is going to work. The only guy outside of Axiom who ever even piqued my interest online was the dude with those kitchen photos. And it wasn't him. I like that kitchen. I'm never going to stop saying it. I think about that kitchen still because it was so big and that stove and oh my God, those cabinets. So yeah, if you aren't on that game, if you aren't on that level of flirting, don't waste your time, man. Point blank, don't waste your time anyway because I am taken. It's not. Some people just follow just to watch. Some are hate follows. I know y'all. I see y'all. Thanks for the numbers, I guess. But for the most part, the people that I interact on a daily basis, I consider y'all my friends. I don't say that lightly because I don't like throwing that word friend around. But a lot of you who I talk to on Twitter and offline and in DMs, I feel that connection. And it's easier for me to have that kind of friendship because I'm not the kind of person that you can just show up at my house and hang out. I'm not the kind of person that you can call up and be like, we're going out tonight on the fly. 
I am the kind of friend that if you say, hey, in a few months, I might be in your area. Do you want to try to plan something? I can mentally brace for that. I can mentally brace and evaluate whether or not it's safe for me to, if I'm going to be able to mentally handle it. And a lot of you are so sweet about that. I used to feel so weird having such stipulations on hanging out, but so many of my friends are cool with it because they're introverts too. So it's really nice to have this community, to be a part of this community and have people understand this and not feel weird about it anymore. So I really thank and appreciate all of y'all. And it's like I said, I just wanted to do this just chat and stream tonight. It's not going to be the full hour long like the normal Biden Chronicles. It's just my way of saying thanks. I've seen so many of y'all send in love. You, you hit up my PayPal. I was feeling leery about doing that. I'm not going to lie. I always feel weird because I don't want people thinking, oh, she's just another grifter. She's asking for money. All these people are the same. I, I get leery about even trying to ask for help sometimes because I don't want people thinking that, you know, I'm going to do it a lot. I always feel like I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't put that PayPal me link out of there. I should take it out of my profile. But every time I've done that in the last few years, I've been yelled at in DMs for friends. Like, give me a PayPal link. I have something for you. Why'd you take it out of your profile? It was easier for us to hit it. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I realized that people can give kindness without strings attached. And it took years for me to start getting a bit more comfortable. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100% there with that. It is still not easy for me to take and accept help when it's offered. I'm working on that, and you have been a big help with that as well. And I really do appreciate it. And I will be posting a bit more pictures from our craft camp um, things with me and Kiddo. He is so excited. He loves art supplies. And let me sh show you. My friend, who she wants to remain anonymous, because she is just an amazing person, but she don't want to take credit for it. And I showed y'all the hammer, but she sent me this craft kit. It looks little. There is so much stuff in here. Glue, feathers, stickers, beads, everything. So we've been working on stuff with that. And like I said, I was able to craft this bad boy, my vote. And this hammer shatters. I didn't have enough room to write glass ceilings on it. But y'all know where I was going with this. She was so inspired by that tweet that I wrote in November 9th, 2016. Because I was pissed about the election. And I was ready to shatter the glass ceiling with the person that we all voted for who should have won. And I am determined that when a certain... VP decides she's going to make her presidential bid that I will be running the charge with my hammer because we're going to shatter that glass ceiling. It's already got a crack in it, y'all. Getting VP was the first step. We're going to shatter that ceiling, and it's never going to be in the way of another American female ever again. Whether she is black, whether she is white, whether she is Asian, whether she's suspended, whether she is trans. We all deserve our place in leadership. And with people like me, who are not even just going to talk the talk, we are in groups, we are organizing, we are going to get our first female president. That is, I before I take my last breath on this earth, I want to see a female president sworn in. Because the way I teared up January 20th, when both Joe and Kamala put those hands on the Bible, held those hands up and took that oath. I want to feel that energy again when we are swearing in a female president. Other countries have did it. There is no reason why we can't be next. There is no reason why we won't be next. Because we're going to get out and vote, right? We are going to get out in our local, our state, and our national every time. Because we've seen what happens when we get apathetic, we see what happens when we let that ball drop. We don't need to lose any more lives to incompetence. We have leaders out there that need us to help them be our voice. 
And thank you, Zombie Doll. I really am great. I'm telling you, I don't just say this as a platitude, y'all. I am grateful for every relationship I have forged on here. You have become like family to me, for real. I know that while I can't really reach out to my blood family right now because of all the craziness and drama, I have people that are like family to me, and that gives me hope for the future. It keeps me going, and I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate you dealing with my fired up. I appreciate you on this journey with me because if you had told me 10 years ago I'd be doing this for my creative outlet or anything, I would have looked at you like you were crazy. I thought I'd be behind the desk doing budgets for the rest of my life, close to snapping again. But life comes at you fast, and I'm just going to go with the flow. And I really appreciate y'all flowing with me. But I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. I know it's not an hour-long Bonnet Chronicles. That's coming on Friday. But I haven't had dinner yet. I have a cake waiting for me. There's so much I'm going to get done tonight, including movie night. Axiom is here, and I just want to spend as much time with him and get him used to this place as possible. But thank y'all for being in on this birthday stream, listening to this old lady rant. And I know, I know, every time I call myself an old lady, some of my older friends are like, I see the side eye you give me, but I feel older. I leveled up, y'all. I'm 44, and I appreciate all the birthday love and wishes. Y'all take care and good night. See you on Friday.